シン・ロブジラ。What's going on there, friends and neighbors? Shin Rob shines bright like a diamond. Jira here, and I'm pretty. But another thing that I'm doing today is talking about the new Bandai Movie Monster series Mecha Godzilla 1975 release. But as you can see, he's a little different. He looks like a Chaos Emerald. <laughs> yeah. Yes, the second Godzilla Store exclusive figure to be released in the month of August. This thing really came out of nowhere. Nobody was expecting this, and when it was released, everybody was kind of just scratching their heads like, Ah, yes. I need that. So I went on over to Zen Market, put my order in for this thing, and... I'm happy. So let's stop talking about me with my face over here and let's just start talking about this figure because it's a doozy. Mm. And there he is, the mystical metallic green Mecha Godzilla figure from the Bandai Movie Monster series of releases. And if you want to talk about Grand, we're going to have to talk about this first. Yes, I got a copy of that awesome Shin Godzilla art print that was coming out, I believe, around this time last year. Shin Godzilla, Mothra, Ghidorah, Rodan, a very, very cool art print. But this is also a bit of a flyer because it is talking. Talking about the Godzilla store in Osaka that'll be opening this autumn. I remember hearing that they would be opening up a second one, and then I remember immediately thinking, oh yeah, it's definitely not going to be in America, so yeah. But it is cool that we are now going to have two Godzilla stores open in Japan. And speaking of which, you got instructions on how to get to Godzilla store in Tokyo, got a picture of the Godzilla store in Tokyo, and you got a bunch of other really cool stuff over here that I don't know if is even like relevant to us US users. Anyway, really, really cool that this was included. Thank you very much, Godzilla Store. Now, for the man of the hour. I believe this mold hasn't been released since 2002, three or four, something along that line. It's kind of, I guess, just been collecting dust in the back of Bandai's warehouse or whatever. So I think it was really, really cool that uh, Toho and Bandai decided to give this thing new life with a new paint job and everything. And as you can see, he is very shiny. He looks very good. And he is essentially just the MG Mark II, the MG 1975 mold, just with different paint. Now, I'm not going to go into crazy crazy amounts of detail when it comes to showcasing the paint job on this thing because he is mainly just one solid color. You know, you're not going to get a 15 minute of me just totally fanboying over the figure like he did with the last one. <laughs> I apologize if people didn't like that. I was just trying to be thorough. But let's take a good old look at this guy's head to talk about the other paint and how it was applied. So as you can see, we have the classic yellow eyes, which were applied rather nicely. A little bit of a bleed through on them towards the bottom and around the sides, but nothing too crazy. And as you can see, we have a red inner mouth from Mechagodzilla with the standard silver teeth, at least for some. Looking along over here, you can see that some of the teeth weren't fully painted and this metallic green really did overtake the metallic silver. And a couple of the teeth out in front over here, you can see the metallic green roots and you can even see a little bit of red really overtaking that one tooth over there. And over here, you can see a little bit of that metallic green bleed through on the side of the mouth, more so through the teeth again and a mess painted tooth right over here. So overall though, I would call the application on the inside of the mouth pretty dang good. Just uh, could have used a little bit of extra time on it, but I am not complaining and that is not going to go against this figure. Because you know, from far away, I mean, look at that. Oh my God, it's perfect. You can't even tell, it's nice. This is just me saying, hey, you might not get a perfect mouth. Now, speaking of imperfections, yes, this figure does have a couple imperfections and I don't know if that's due to just how it was made or if it was just the shipping because this box did look like somebody stepped on it. So, look at that. You see that? There is some scuffage on the neck over here. It appears that most of the uh, paint scuffing is going to be happening on these little uh, bolt nubs over here. But yes, there is some paint scuffing. And originally I thought it was from the jaw, but as you can see, the jaw really doesn't touch that part of the figure. And it's not just over there because it is also over here as well. Just a little bit of uh, that bolt, well, most of that bolt, just being nearly scraped away. This one's got a little bit of scraping on it. So this kind of just uh, proves that this is just a paint job. He wasn't casted in this. I think if he was casted in this, this would look a thousand times better. There is a possibility, since I know a lot of you are going to be ordering from Zen Market or your proxy site of choice, there is a possibility of some paint scuffage. But thankfully, those are the only two major areas I have seen that, and they are not, like, glaringly noticeable. So now we can get on 
to the positives. So the paint might not be screen accurate, but everything else I'd say, yeah, that's pretty dang screen accurate. From the missile looking toenails to the legs that have even like little like creases looking on them, this whole figure is going to just look amazing. It is, it, it really, really is. And it really does look like it just kind of like walked off the screen just with a different paint job. You are going to see all of these fine details, whether they are bolts like this, or they are little grooves on the tail, even on the dorsal fins. The figure really does look very, very good. And you know, for my first Mecha Godzilla. 1975 figure eh, that's pretty dang awesome so you can consider me pretty dang happy that this thing came out looking as great as it did and you know never having owned a version of this figure or this mold entirely this makes me a very happy camper and just so i remember yes there is detail on the bottom side of his tail and just looking at the back of the figure as well you can see all those fantastic little bolts on there nothing is just a random incoherent nub on this figure everything looks fantastic and even on the arms yes i'm going to have to get nice and close for this one but i love how on the arms we have mecha g2 i do wish that was painted maybe like a darker version of this metallic green or that red or that yellow that would have looked cool but yeah, that's just a uh, that's just a, a nitpick but I, I really like how on the arms it really like does look like you know it's got that uh, that material there I like that they really went all out with this sculpt and I like that it's all painted like as you can see yet again all the bolts all the different mechanisms that go into Mechagodzilla's arms this is a very very beautifully detailed sculpt and on either side of the arm you are going to see it they absolutely did not skimp out on detail whatsoever but going back to the back of the figure it all looks fantastic aside from this little midriff here it's just like you know a little too smooth and everything but looking at another mecha godzilla figure it looks like it's kind of meant to be that way it just looks like it should have had a little bit more wrinklage going on but we'll save that for the comparison section of the video i just always really enjoyed the handmade look the original mecha godzilla had and it's so cool to see that it translated so well into a figure because uh, just look at this this looks like it was made in a freaking garage somewhere by a bunch of aliens and that's awesome i love it i love it i love it i love it and all of the details here are fantastic don't worry we'll get to talking about the head in a bit i just want to showcase everything on the back and the side of the neck really really looking nice and uh, like i did with the other arm the same thing for this arm as well you're going to get amazing detail on it you're going to get a very very nice looking mg2 over here you're going it's the same thing with every arm i'm just going to keep repeating myself if i don't say this now but the arms look fantastic i love the detailing on the arms and everything just look at that oh i really do love that this looks like the same material that was used in the movie it's almost like they covered like some kind of rubber in aluminum foil i really really like that translated so well into this figure i really really do all of this it just looks so 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 very good very nice very screen accurate minus the paint just look at that that is that is so nice. Even looking at Mecha G's neck vent over here, which totally wasn't used so the person in the suit could see, that looks good too. And I was a little worried, like something like this or even the bolts, I, I was worried they would get kind of like buried under this paint, but they really didn't. Everything shows through very, very nicely. Like, look at that. Look at all those random little bumps and orbs and everything. What are they used for? I don't know, but they look great. Oh, yeah, great. Just look at all that lovely, fantastic detail, fam. Gosh dang, they did a great job on this. And I'll always love the original Mecha Godzilla design the most because I just love that his head looks like a can opener. Like, look at this. I could totally crack a cold one on this. Maybe not. I don't want to do that with vinyl. But this just looks so very fantastic, all of it. The dorsal fins on the back of the neck, his crazy little cheek things that he's got on here. The inside of the mouth, the teeth the 44 magnum nostrils mecha godzilla is looking fantastic in his uh metallic green paint job and i have to sing my praises yet again for a bandai that sadly doesn't exist okay that's a lie bandai still exists but the bandai that made this original mold uh, i don't know but anyway, in talking about the tag, now I found this tag very interesting. It really does look like they had a release for this figure planned and uh, the, the tag is just very telling of it. It literally looks like they went into Photoshop or something and just tinted it the same color as the figure because even in looking on the inside of everything, it just looks, I, obviously the tag is going to match the, the paint job and everything, but this looks like it was definitely meant for a normal screen accurate release. It really, really does, but I could be wrong. It's just, you know, in 
presentation, it do be looking like that. But it is a nice tag. You got the cutout for the dorsal fins on the back and everything. It's looking great. Terror of Mechagodzilla. There we go. That's the tag. And now... As if I wasn't demonstrating this enough throughout the video when I was just talking about the paint and the detail, we are going to go over articulation, and the head can go all the way around, as can the arms. Not much resistance as I thought I would get from the shoulder blades over here, which is good. Knock these arms up a little bit, and the legs can also go all the way around. Again, not much resistance from them. Oh yeah, I totally forgot. I, I, I love this too. I really, really do. I like how... I really like how accurate this all looks to the movie. I didn't even talk about the tail or anything, man. Even on the bottom of the feet. What's going on, Rob? But yeah, Bandai 2002, made in China. Toho Company, 1975. And yeah, I guess I really should show the detail on the tail as well. The tail obviously has no articulation either, but it do be looking rather, rather nice. I like even in the corner over here, it might just be how I'm looking at it, but it does look like it was like just welded onto Mechagodzilla's butt. I, I, I like that. <laughs> I really do like that. Yeah. So arms, legs, head, nothing in the waist, nothing in the tail. So I guess it's time to bring out the Mechagodzilla family, eh? Godzilla Store exclusive Mechagodzilla 1975. The Bandai EX series Mechagodzilla 1974 with tag. The Japanese release for those who remember that arc. The Candy Trade Kiryu figure. The Kid Robot Mechagodzilla 1974 Mystery Mini. Trend Masters Mechagodzilla 2. Trend Masters Mechagodzilla 2 Gold Repaint version. Bandai America Chibi Mechagodzilla 2. Another Trend Master. Master's Mechagodzilla 2 figure from the Doom Island series, Bandai Movie Monster Series Heavy Arms Kiryu, Trend Master's 10-inch Mechagodzilla 2, the Diamond Select Vinyl Bank Mechagodzilla 1974, oh boy, gotta move back, he tall, the Bandai America Giant Kiryu figure, the Bandai Master Detail Movie Monster Series Mechagodzilla 4, aka Anime Mechagodzilla figure. And we absolutely have to cap it off with the most important addition to this collection himself. The original Bandai 2003 re-release of Godzilla 1974. Yeah. That is just such a cool sight to see. I finally have a Mechagodzilla 1975 figure. Uh, and you know, when compared to the Bandai EX version of Mechagodzilla 1974, I know it's a mostly entirely different mold from the Bandai Japan 1974 Mechagodzilla, but this guy really is beefier. Like, I really wish I had a Bandai Japan 74 to do this comparison with, but literally everything about this figure is beefier. Beefier neck, beefier head, beefier arms, beefier body, maybe stumpier legs, even the tail is beefier. Eh, I don't know. I am comparing it to a completely different line, but MG-75 be looking hecka beefy. But even when comparing the new movie monster series Kiryu to the original 75 Mechagodzilla, you can definitely see just... <sighs> I don't want to keep being that person that's saying Bandai is going through a bit of a slump right now, even though we know it's not entirely their fault. Damn. <laughs> Fall from grace, kinda. Yeah, and you know, when talking about beefy Mechagodzillas, you can't not talk about the Satellite Boy, the stack of pancake-necked Mechagodzilla 4. But it's just crazy, like, seeing these two beefy boys together and seeing how great this figure looks compared to, you know, this chromed-out Mechagodzilla. I really, really do hope Bandai releases, like, a normal metallic version of this. It would just look so cool with everybody else. But even if they don't, I have a nice standout turquoise greenish teal metallic boy and i'd say these two are pretty much in perfect scale with one another right yeah and these are just two of the more wildly painted mechagodzilla figures in my collection never thought i'd ever see a golden mechagodzilla and i never thought i'd see a metallic green mechagodzilla either this is just nutty like here's to truly hoping bandai can make a return to this like this would be awesome but at the same time i would take this figure again in just silver and i'd be perfectly happy with it i say that now but once the figure actually happens and comes out i'll complain about how there's no shading on it <laughs> i'm aware of my ways but yeah man this is just so cool <laughs> i don't know why i'm having like a moment just having all of these compared together and 
the stark difference in color. I don't know. I'm just enjoying myself. <laughs> but to close off this portion of the review, I will say this figure absolutely isn't needed. I know a lot of people are upset that this was a Godzilla store exclusive and not everybody really has the money right now to be spending extra dollar on a proxy site. Even though Zen Market really doesn't add that much extra coin to your orders, I do have to agree with people. I do wish Bandai would make these a little bit wider of a release but i also understand why they're doing it as well but just because i understand doesn't mean i agree with it so as i just said this isn't a release that you need but if you really really want it i do suggest acting on it now godzilla store exclusives especially when they're still on the store's website have this really weird tendency to be on there just when you don't have enough and then the second you have enough for it it's gone and already this guy is commanding some crazy, crazy scalper prices. I beg of you, please do not give in to these scalper prices like I did last month with those and Playmates Godzilla vs. God figures. There's an easier way to get this. It's going to take a little bit extra work, but it really isn't work. You're just copying, pasting a link into a website and you're calling it a day. I'll even include a clip here if I need to. Future Rob, please add. Mind you, in order to do this, you do need to make an account with Zen Market. Don't worry, it is free. Anyway, to attain this figure for yourself with the help of Zen Market, you just have to go to the Godzilla store. You have to find this figure. It'll be on the homepage. Copy and paste the link from this page and you got to put it in the search bar on Zen Market. Copy, paste, click search right up here and then it's going to load and load and load and load and load and then it'll appear here then you click add and then after you click add you have to put money into your account from either your credit card or a paypal or thing and then you just have to wait for them to have it delivered to their warehouse and then essentially after that you're just paying for shipping and then you just wait for it that's all it's that simple there we go. It is a lovely figure, and if you don't have a Mecha Godzilla 2 figure, I would say it is worth it. It just depends on how much you're willing to pay for a Bandai figure. Because this was, I believe, $21, and then, you know, plus shipping and everything, it's going to be however much. But I do think it is worth picking up, especially for Mecha Godzilla fans. If you are a Mecha Godzilla fan, yeah, I highly do recommend it. Absolutely. So I think it is about time to close the door on the Ego Mermaid Waffle Mecha Godzilla 1975 figure. All credits go to Corey. And, uh, yeah, let's cut back to my face, huh? And that is that, friends and neighbors. Aside from that little issue that I have with the paint, this is actually a really awesome release, and this is probably, like, my favorite Mecha Godzilla figure ever right now. It's not just new figure hype goggles. I just really love this design. This is my first Mecha Godzilla 2 figure, I think, ever. I guess I should say Mecha Godzilla 75, but... Mm. And I really do hope Bandai releases, like, a screen-accurate version of this with the silver and everything, because this is just such a good mold it's like why even bother releasing another one ah i love it but anyway everybody that's about going to wrap it up for this review but before we say goodbye if you follow me on twitter you know that i am putting together a compilation ending for my godzilla 2014 reissue review that i'm going to be doing in october i'm trying to get everybody in the community together to say one big thank you for NECA for everything that they have done for us in their time making Godzilla figures. I've already got luminous reviews. I've contacted a bunch of other figure reviewers. I'm getting friends. I'm getting friends of friends. I'm getting friends of friends of friends of friends of just coming in together, holding their favorite NECA figure or standing by their NECA Godzilla collection and just saying, thank you. If you would like to participate, I'd really appreciate it. If you check the description below, I will have like a little thing, like a little bit of a requirement thing that you have to meet. But there's also going to be a link to Google Drive where you'll be able to drop your video into. Just be sure you introduce yourself in that video. That's something that I have to make clear just so I know where to put the credit for. Like if you have a channel or whatever, or if you don't have a channel, plug your like Twitter or anything like that, plug anything you want. And I'm just going to cram all of that at the end of my NECA 2014 reissue review to kind of just like signify like the end of this really lovely era of Godzilla figure collecting. Jeez. But yeah, more information and then some will be linked down below. I have been Shin Rob Jira. I hope you enjoyed a review of this little Chaos Emerald boy. <laughs> and I will see you all next week for possibly two videos. One of the uh, finale NECA reviews and possibly an Ultraman video. We shall see. Hmm. Until then, Shin Rob Jira, lovely viewer, please check the description below. Be a part of the finale of the end of NECA Godzillion. You can always come back to us. Working title. <laughs> And I will see you all next time. Peace out, Femola. Bye.